Hey guys, it's Jake here, and I'm back with a video on how to do an oil change on this BMW 528i. Now, even if you don't have this exact model, this is a 2013, they call it an F10. The, many of the instructions here will also apply for your BMW. The access panels will be a little bit different. The drain plug will likely be a little bit different, but it'll be very similar. Now, if you read the manual for BMW on this car, it actually says oil change service center only, and they're not very user friendly for someone that wants to do the work themselves. But we won't let that stop us. I, I did some research on the internet and I read some manuals and here's what I came up with. First, let's talk about the supplies and parts and tools you're gonna need to uh, accomplish this oil change. On this engine, we need about 5.3 quarts of, let's see, 5W30 engine oil. I'll put a link in the description below. I got mine off Amazon. You'll need an oil filter. That will come with about two O-rings and a crush washer. I didn't use a crush washer because on my drain plug, it doesn't have, um, it doesn't need one of those. It's actually plastic, so it's a different style. Uh, you also are going to need a way to lift up the car. So either you take it to a friend's place that has a shop or what I did is I put the jack underneath, lifted the car up, and then I put uh, supports on each side. If your car is a lower profile, you have more support tires or an air dam in the front, you may need to get some low profile ramps to first lift the car up several inches in order to get the jack underneath but my car was easier. I had the clearance to do so. There's a jack lifting point in the middle of the car, uh, almost underneath the engine, and you can lift the car from there. The other parts you're gonna need, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter hex Allen tool to open the plastic drain plug on this car. If you have the metal style drain plug on a few model um, years below this one, or before this one, it's gonna take 17 millimeter or 18 millimeter. And then on top of the engine, you need to remove the uh, oil filter and you're gonna use an oil filter uh, wrench. I'll put a link in the description below. I bought one off Amazon. It worked very well. No sense in messing around with um, something that doesn't fit correctly. And then you can put it on a torque wrench and torque it to the right torque spec. You also want to have some cardboard to lay down underneath the engine. It helps allow you to slide around and also absorb any oil spills. I also put down an oil cloth and then you'll need an oil drain pan. You can get these at AutoZone or on Amazon, places like that. Okay, so the first thing I do is I go drive the the car around the block a little bit. You don't want to get it extra, extra hot, but you do need to get the engine warm and get the oil moved around and it'll make it uh, more liquidy so it comes out easier. And then we'll pull the car into the garage and we'll set the parking brake. This is very important. And then we put chocks behind both tires just so there's no chance of it rolling or moving. And then we'll put the main jack underneath the front of the engine and look for the metal exposed part underneath that plastic there. And we'll lift the car up pretty high. All right, once the car is high enough, you'll put your jack supports on each side. There'll be some plastic pucks on the side of the frame and those are the lifting points for this BMW. So look for something similar. You'll put those tight underneath and then be really slow and slowly lower the jack onto those. And then I like to leave the jack still connected to the car slightly and kind of push on the car and make sure that there's no chance of it moving on those jack stands. This is safety first. Okay, once you're very confident that it is being supported well, I move the jack back out of, uh, out of the way of where the oil is gonna drain, but I do put the jack underneath the car just slightly and um, not tight against the plastic moldings, but just as a backup in case that one of the jack stands was to fall. So you can start at the bottom or the top. I think I started at the bottom of this engine first. So I slide underneath the car and I open this screw. 
and that will allow me to spin the access cover and we'll pop the X cover off, and that'll expose the plastic drain plug on this car. And using a 10 millimeter Allen, it would be preferable if you had it connected to a 3 8 inch ratchet or something like that, but I didn't, so I just used an Allen uh, and I loosened it. It should not be on there too tight. And then you're gonna get your drain pan ready, and you'll open this up, and that will start the free flow of the oil into the drain pan. Now while that's draining, I go to the top of the engine and using my oil filter wrench, I'll loosen the top of the oil filter housing. And when you pull the housing cup off, the filter will be connected to that. And just use your plastic gloves and pull down on the filter until it uh, unconnects. And then I leave the filter there for a little bit and let it drain down. And now that there's air allowed in the top of the engine, the oil will flow even more through the bottom of the engine. All right, once you think that all the oil has dripped out, I'll remove the oil filter, throw that into a Ziploc bag, or you can put it on top of your oil drain plan and let it drip uh, for a couple hours. And now we're looking at the oil filter cap. There's two O-rings. There's a little O-ring at the tip, and then there's a big black O-ring on the main uh, screw housing. You wanna be careful removing these. You don't wanna use sharp metal tools that will nick and scratch the plastic. So use something dull or plastic, and you wanna pry off these O-rings, and you're gonna replace these with the new O-rings that came in your oil filter kit. You want to make sure you have the right oil filter kit before starting this. You don't want to end up halfway and then not have the right o-ring. Wipe this oil filter cap really well. Get off all the old oil or any dust and insert the new o-rings. Once the new o-rings have been inserted, uh, you can use some oil and lube up the, oil, the new o-rings and this is important because you don't want them to bind when you tighten it back up. Okay, so by now most of the oil or all of the oil should have been drained out. So we'll go back underneath the car and it's time to reinsert the drain plug. Simply reinsert the drain plug and with this plastic one you gotta be very careful not to over tighten. I think they say seven uh, NM is what the torque setting is but I didn't have a an adapter for my Allen, so I just closed it by hand and a slightly a little bit more, but you don't want to over tighten. This drain plug has um, a latching system, so it won't back off. And there is an O-ring inside and it was not told to replace it, so we left it as is. But you can replace this drain plug. I'll put a link in the description below. They're about five to $20, depending on how fast you need one. All right, we'll button up the bottom of the access panel. We're, we're done with the bottom of the engine. And we'll go back top. And here we put in the new oil filter. And we'll screw the cap back on. Be really careful that you don't cross thread. If you want to start um, with a counterclockwise motion and then clockwise, that helps. And I cinch it as much as I can by hand. And then the torque, setting, uh, the torque settings for this is 25 Nm. So I'll go to 25 Nm on my torque uh, tool. If you don't know what the Nm is, you can convert that to foot pounds on Google. Just Google Nm to foot pounds. It'll give you a number. All right, the uh, oil filter cap likes to get stuck on top. But if you just tap it with the tool and pull slightly, eventually it'll let go. All right, now it's time to fill the engine with oil. Wipe the cap really well at the top, and then also when you remove it, you don't wanna get any contamination into your oil that you're trying to keep clean. And we'll set up a funnel, and we'll pour in the required uh, quarts of oil. In this case, 5.3 quarts. And be careful with these German engines. Sometimes it'll say five liters, and don't mistake five liters for quarts. It is similar, but you'll wanna do a Google conversion to find out and make sure you have the right amount of oil. Uh, I like to err on the side of less oil. I can always add oil. Um, it's a little harder to get rid of, so in my case, I just dumped in the entire five liter bottle. 
and I'll start the engine up and then I'll test how much is in there and then I can always top it off. Okay, let's lower the car back off the jack stand. So we'll lift the car back up, remove the jack stands, lower it, remove the, the uh, pucks at the back of the wheels. And then we'll take this car for just a gentle idle and a gentle drive down the street. And once the car gets up to operating temperatures in about five or 10 minutes, we'll stop the car on level ground and we'll go through the reset procedure for the oil service. Start with the ignition off, then press it one time. Then you're gonna press the odometer button, press and hold. Sometimes it doesn't take the first time. If it doesn't, let go and then press again. Next, you should see any service remain reminder lights, brake fluid, oil, engine oil, I press and pulsed, and then I press again. Ask me if I wanna reset, I say yes, I press again, and now it's gonna reset the service reminder for the engine oil. All right, to check how much oil you have in your system, you'll go to vehicle info and vehicle status. Scroll down to measure engine oil level. Make sure you start the measurement with a warm engine on level ground and it'll measure how much oil is in your engine similar to a dipstick. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to be notified of future videos.